Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to the Medlink students webinar in June. Uh, we're really excited to have you with us this evening. We're going to be covering a lot of topics from uh, the admission process to applying into medical schools as well as some of the most popular medical schools that are available for 2022 for international students. Um, we're also going to be hearing from the students themselves. Uh, we've got quite a few students who have been generous enough to give us some time this evening just so they can share their personal experiences with you. So a um, little bit about myself. I'm an advisor here at Medlink Students. I've been doing this for quite some time now. I've helped lots of students. Uh, we tend to have phone calls with the students where we discuss different aspects and, and try to help them in the best way that we can in choosing the best university with them. So uh, the first thing that we wanna do uh, just to start off this evening is to actually ask you a question. So the question we wanna ask is, what are you most looking forward to on this webinar? As you can see, there's a, a few different answers uh, and you can interact and select these um, just so we can get an idea uh, of what it is that you wanna hear more of throughout the webinar uh, so we can tailor it towards yourselves. Uh, so we'll just give you a few seconds there uh, to answer those questions. Okay. Uh, I think we're done with that now. Uh, we should have the answers coming up in a second. All right, wow, that's surprising. The admissions processes. Uh, so we've actually got a couple of uh, my colleagues from our admissions team on this evening, uh, and they're gonna be talking about the admissions process and procedures. Um, we've also got a lot of you wanting to know about the advantages, um, hearing from some of the students, uh, and obviously the, the recognition as well. And that's why most of you will go to study abroad is, is to get that recognition. So um, moving on from there, um, here are some of our speakers for this evening. So as you can see there, uh, we've got a wide variety of students from different medical schools across Europe. They've all got different experiences, uh, some advantages of their own to tell us as well. Uh, so there's a lot to go through. Um, and on this webinar, we're gonna be covering lots of different topics, um, starting off with uh, exactly who we are as Medlink students. So as you can see here, these are the speakers from our team here. So we've got myself, um, a couple of admissions representatives, as I mentioned, um, and also a couple of my colleagues uh, as advisors as well. Uh, so they've got lots, a wealth of knowledge, and they're gonna be able to give you a really good insight this evening into what opportunities uh, you have for studying medicine or dentistry abroad. Uh, so just to go over um, the course of the webinar really briefly here, uh, we've got a few different chapters including who we are as Medlink students, uh, the benefits of studying abroad, the state of medical education in the UK. And we know a lot of students here from the UK, so we'll be going over that as well. Um, as well as the living costs, tuition fees, admissions requirements, uh, some of the best medical schools, the most popular this year to apply to, and some things to be careful of as well. Uh, because like anything, especially making a decision like this, you have to be very cautious and careful to make the best choice. Uh, we're going to be looking at where these degrees are recognized and how that recognition comes about, as well as how we can help you as an organization. We're then going to go over a few questions and answers and conclude the webinar from that point. Now, throughout these stages, we're going to be hearing from students themselves about their own experiences. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, this is a question that we get asked very commonly. Uh, who are you? Who is Medlink students? Uh, I think the best person to ask here uh, would be my colleague, Osman is the head of our admissions team here at Medlink Students. Uh, now he's studied dentistry abroad himself, so he's been in the same shoes as you're looking to go into, uh, and he has helped a lot of students throughout their journey. So Osman, I'm gonna hand over to you now to answer this question uh, and tell everyone who is Medlink Students. Okay, uh, again, thank you for joining today. It's really exciting to come today and uh, talk to you about all our knowledge and share with you our experience about studying abroad. Uh, it's really great how many students have joined, a huge number, hundreds of students today have joined us and uh, we're really thrilled to, as advisors, as students and uh, doctors, to share with you all our experience of supporting students who are coming abroad. As an organization, we are set up by a group of doctors and other students who currently study, who support the students on the ground and also professional advisors who are always in charge of taking care of your file, making sure that you have a very strong advantage, a competitive advantage that is over other applicants so we can help you study abroad 
gain admission because we full know we've been through it ourselves. We know how tough it is, how competitive it is. I remember when I was studying, when I was considering applying uh, for dentistry, I was very nervous about it. And uh, I applied in the UK initially. I applied three years in a row and every year I was rejected, even though I had more qualifications than what the entry requirements were in the UK. It was extremely and ruthlessly competitive to apply. I would go to my interviews and uh, at the medical schools, one in uh, London, uh, one in uh, Preston, I remember, and I would meet people that were applying for the third or fourth time. And I was only 18 back then. It was, for me, it was very scary because these people have had so much experience. They're applying over and over again, and it's become very competitive. That's why we decided that as uh, us as a collective to, find other options and other routes for students who have been through this struggle as we have. Uh, so we set up this organization as meddling students and we're the only organization set up by a group of doctors who's who has more than seven years of experience supporting students like you. As a group of doctors ourselves, we we'll look after you, we we'll make sure that uh, you are supported from the moment that you consider going abroad to the moment that you arrive abroad and then the moment that you graduate, where you come back home to register as a doctor, whether that be in the UK, in America, in Ireland, in many, in Nigeria, in Arabic world, anywhere that you uh, decide to go. And every year we help thousands of students who come to us, we advise them. We give them all the facts, the transparent information so they can make an informed decision on what's best for them regarding safety, recognition, quality of education and so on, which we'll, we will expand on in this webinar. All right, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Osman. Uh, it's fantastic to hear from you. I actually had a student asking me earlier, who are MedLink students in one of my appointments? Um, I sent them the link for the webinar and uh, probably watching now, is a fantastic uh, response from you there to hear about exactly um, who it is and why we do what we do, you know, why it is that we're out there and we do it. And as you can see here, we've got a team of doctors, uh, advisors like myself, admissions team, as well as on the ground support. So we're really there to, to help you throughout. Um, now, that's all, all well and done, but what are the actual benefits of studying abroad? This is something that we get asked even more. Um, and to talk a little bit about this, I want to invite my colleague Dana, who's an advisor like myself, has helped loads of students over the years um, in trying to choose the best fit for them and the most suitable university for them. Dana, uh, if you take it from there. Thank you, Tom. Hello, everyone. It's quite ex exciting to see such a huge number of students attending uh, in such a very busy period uh, at the moment. Where end of June, everyone's very enthusiastic to start applying. And I think this is a very important topic to, to discuss now during this period of time when many students are looking to study abroad. There's many advantages for students when they go abroad, they share their experience with us. They tell us about many advantages. I'm going to share today the, the best things students like about Europe. Number one, which is the most important, uh, advantage is globally recognized universities. The universities in Europe are worldwide recognized. So wherever you're from, you have the opportunity to go to Europe, study, and you can return back to your home country. In addition to having courses fully taught in English language, you don't have to learn a new language. You're not going to have to sit and spend a year or two learning the local language of the country you're studying in. The courses are fully taught in English, plus affordable fees. The universities have very affordable fees. According to the students' budget, they range between £3,000 up to £25,000. And the flexible admission requirements. In Europe, whatever, requirement, whatever uh, qualifications you have, some students have A-levels, some have uh, the, the American system in high school, some have the Arabic system, which is used in the Middle East. Whatever qualifications you have in these, whatever your average is, we will always manage to, fi to find a university for you, which is one of the best universities, and you can study there. They have also a very high standard of education, a very diverse environment. So you find students from every corner of the world. You get to meet students from different cultures, learn about these cultures, and learn how to deal with people from different backgrounds. 
as a doctor, you will see patients from everywhere. So it's important to know how to communicate with these patients and understand how they think, how they feel, and how they would understand you as a doctor. They have also modern facilities, which is what students love about Europe, is the experience. You will get to experience medicine and dentistry to the fullest, uh, having a great experience with the best doctors that you can shadow in hospitals and in the universities, uh, especially with your theoretical courses, the doctors are fluent in English. So we'd love to have you join us in Europe. We'd love to get on a call with you guys and uh, speak more about the advantages and about the opportunities you have to go to Europe. Back to you. Thank you, Donna, for uh, telling us about some of the advantages. Um, it's great because a lot of students, they can't find these things out very easily. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing about some of the advantages from the students themselves and their own unique experiences. Every single webinar, we always hear some really interesting ones that we could never predict uh, that were such benefits and opportunities for them uh, to study abroad. Um, so we've spoken a little bit there about uh, studying in Europe itself. Uh, we're now going to talk a little bit about the situation in the UK. We know that a lot of our audience here are, are actually students in the UK at the moment. Uh, you may be trying to apply to UK medical schools as well. So we're going to go over that in a bit of detail. Um, and I'm going to bring Osman back in uh, to speak to us a little bit about this now. Yeah, thank you, Tom. So as you can see, and as you all know, applying at home has become extremely competitive, like we covered earlier. Um, a lot of students suffer every year and they feel put down because there's simply too many applicants for the limited number of seats. And that's not just the UK. We chose the UK as an example. We do deal with students from all over the world who suffer from the same pain of not being able to follow what they dream of, what they love, what they've been passionate about, what they want to study. Uh, a lot of people have been dreaming of becoming doctors or dentists. I can tell you I was, uh, even when I was 16. You know, you do that work experience, you, you go, you explore the field, and you know for sure that you this is the path for you and there is no other path. And a lot of people, they apply for medicine in the UK, even though they meet the entry requirements and not just the UK, anywhere in the world, they meet the entry requirements. But unfortunately, the medical schools are forced to choose the best of the best of the best of the best, because simply there are not enough seats available. And some students ask, why is there not enough seats? Well, it's because the government also funds these seats, even though you're paying some tuition fees. But for example, in the UK, the government pays 200,000 pounds just to train one medical doctor and that's also counting on that medical doctor graduating and that's only per uh, that's only uh, per student so there is not enough budget there's not enough seats and there's so much competition i remember when i applied for one medical school uh, uh, through my ucas application once i simply clicked on the wrong button where i ticked a, a something about funding or something completely not so important and the medical school just got back to me and said, we're not going to consider you. I said, this is such a simple, small mistake. They said, we simply have too many applicants. We cannot consider you. Uh, any reason they, that they have, they will reject students. And that's what beca what's become extremely frustrating for students. And that's what's forced students to look at other pathways. And there is, that's why it's such an adventurous and amazing, thrilling uh, pathway to come to Europe. But here are statistics, as you have probably seen while I was talking. Every year, there are more applicants and the seats are not increasing in proportion to the number of applicants that are available. There are more applicants, more re-applicants as well. You are competing with people that are much more experienced than you, uh, have more years on uh, people who are in their 30s and you're 18, 20, you're applying. As you can see, it's very competitive. So the UK is currently in a dire need of doctors and dentists as well. The UK currently, they need, and uh, according to The Guardian, uh, which is published widely as well in other newspapers, uh, you can see if you search, the NHS and the UK need 50,000 doctors every single year. And only, as you can see in the previous slide, 9,500 are graduating every year. That's, not, that's just simply not enough. And in the next 10 years, 
more and more doctors are retiring, therefore increasing the need for more doctors, which is a very dire and bad situation for the UK, as well as also other countries. That's not just the UK. So you see here also in 2020, only two years ago, 10,000 international medical graduates joined the UK. The UK is welcoming people from all sorts of corners of the world. The UK and the NHS, they need doctors. And so does every country, especially after COVID happened. So here we've showed you, because some people ask us, well, if I go abroad, does that lower my chances of getting a job when I come back to my country, whether that be UK, USA, America, uh, Canada, whatever, Ireland, and so on, uh, even Nigeria, uh, Middle East, wherever you come from. You can see here, there are every year, almost half of the doctors, half of the workforce that join the, the medical uh, medicine uh, profession, they are uh, almost half of the number of UK students. It's a huge number, a huge number of foreign doctors being, uh, being attracted to come to the UK, uh, to come and start working in the UK. All right, uh, thank you, uh, Tom. I hope that shows you all how much of every single country, not just the UK, is in need of doctors every year. Thank you, Osman. Um, some quite scary statistics there, really, uh, especially with regards to the, the 50,000 doctors um, that the UK needs just to reach the, the average um, of the EU doctors. Um, it just goes to show you know, how desperate they are for doctors to come in. So really, the opportunity is there. Uh, now, something we want to move on to from there is how does medicine and dentistry programs work in Europe? Are they the same as in your home country or are they a little bit different? Uh, now, I want to introduce uh, another one of my colleagues here, Edmund, uh, to go into a bit of detail here. Now, Edmund is like a wealth of knowledge uh, when it comes to anything regarding universities, countries, um, recognition, uh, and also how these medical programs really work been doing this for many years now um, and I think he's uh, one of the best to go over the process with you now. Uh, Edmund? Uh, thank you. Thank you for the introduction Tom. Hey everyone, <clears throat> thank you for joining us tonight. It's always great to have you joining us and, and finding out which opportunities are there. You know we normally have parents that join us well wanting to see what's out there. Um, now over the last decade European universities really have seen thousands of international students apply to their schools. And as brilliant, uh, Dana brilliantly mentioned earlier, studying abroad has so many benefits, uh, some of which are the types of degrees that you earn after graduating. Um, in, in Europe, medicine is six years long. Um, and this is where the first three years are considered the preclinical years. Um, and that's when you learn the fundamental principles of medicine. Um, so you learn the basics, you build the clinical skills within that um, to really prepare you um, to go into start seeing patients, which is where you start in the final three. And those are the clinical years. Uh, the most exciting part of those years of medicine. So you get to learn about the different specialties out there, the things that you've always wanted to do. You know, so you'll learn things from surgery to pediatrics to internal medicine to obstetrics and gynecology, you get to learn and, and shadow the doctors and be more hands-on. Um, so you build and develop skills about even the smallest things about interacting with the patient. You know, when you're in the children's hospital, learning about how to calm a patient in different scenarios. And you get to see different patients from all over the world. And that's the exciting part about studying abroad because you build so much skill when you go, when you finish, so that you can go out into the world and become a doctor. Now, the best part is you graduate as a doctor of medicine. Uh, for example, um, when you return to the UK, you'll work as a foundation year two doctor. And so that means that you work as a senior doctor. And this is one of the great things about studying as a doctor of, M a doctor of medicine, MD. Now for dentistry, some courses are five years long, um, and then some are six. Studying five years means you do the first two years, which are also the preclinical years, where you build the different skills it needs in dentistry. And then the final three years will be your practical years. That's where you learn about the, special, the specialties within dentistry. 
Now for the six year options, uh, you get to do three years of preclinical, and then you have the, the final three years being your clinical placement. Uh, each of the course has its benefits. So for example, the six year course um, allows you to do your internship as part of the, the degree, which means that you normally graduate as a doctor of dental medicine. And then when you come back, say to the UK, you can then start working as a general dentist or going into your core training or the specialist training. Now, the five-year option allows you to come back to the UK um, and then you'll work and do a foundation training where you work as a junior dentist um, before you start going into working as a, a general dentist or even specialist training. So this gives you a really broad understanding of what it's like to study abroad. Because a lot of the students that we speak to always want to know, is the degree going to be the same? Am I going to get the same skills? And the facilities, are they going to be the same? And the answer is yes. You'll get a good quality of education. And as Dana was saying, you know, you get so many benefits of going abroad. And when you break it down to, you know, the preclinical, this is where you get to some of the students over the summer, they get to go to the hospital, they get to see some patients, they get to learn about how to inject a patient. Uh, for the dental students, they get to go to the practices and observe and see what it's like to really get them excited to, to actually the journey that they started. Now, let's say you've done your A-levels or your high school and you decided to stay at home and do a degree. So you want to do graduate entry. Now, graduate entry medicine or dentistry is also another great way in, in kickstarting your, your journey to becoming a doctor or a dentist. So in the UK and some other parts of the world, uh, the graduate entry program are compressed courses, usually four years long. Um, and the graduate entry option in Europe, they're slightly new ones than the UK ones. So what this means is that what the universities will do is they will recognize subjects or modules, if you like, of what you've done. So what they will do is assess your previously studied degree um, and then transfer the credits that you've done in the course. So you can reduce the time that you do that. So you could be studying for up to four years. Um, and all of these courses are recognized worldwide. And the most important thing is that they also comply with what they call the European credit transfer system, which means that you're able to use those modules that you did in your bachelor's to go into the programs. So for dentistry, you could study for up to four years. And then for medicine, exactly the same. And the great part is all these courses are taught in English. And to qualify, um, we simply assess your bachelor's degree, but you must have science related uh, modules or subjects in them. So for example, a biomedical science student would qualify to do up to four years, or someone that's done medical sciences could qualify for that. Um, but we will need to assess everything is done on a case by case. Um, to help you find the options out there for you. Um, and then again, the courses are recognized globally. And all the hard work has been done uh, by researching all the recognized schools abroad for you. So you don't really have to. Um, and that's how the graduate entry course works in Europe. We're excited to welcome you abroad this year. We can't wait to uh, meet all of you. Um, I know the pandemic has not allowed a lot of students to travel, but this year, we can't wait to welcome you. Back to you, Tom. Edmund, thank you. That's fantastic. Uh, we're actually going to hear now from a graduated dentist. Uh, he's been practicing now as a registered dentist for some time. Uh, he did his dental degree in Europe. Uh, so Dr. Saz, are you with us to give us a bit of a, an insight into how you found it? I'm indeed, Tom. Thank you so much for uh, inviting us on to, to talk about this. And um, yeah, for me, it's just been a, a phenomenal journey and I invite everyone to uh take that journey if they are keen and passionate about learning about dentistry or medicine because of the benefits afforded me since i you know went abroad uh to start my uh dental program which was a five-year program in latvia and what it did was really allow me to form a network of friends looking back now who I'm still in touch with and able to basically 
connect with and grow with. And they're all out there do, in, from different places in the world, like Sweden, Norway, Germany. Um, and they're all doing their uh, specialist training in different areas now. And it's just sky's the limit in terms of what you can learn. Um, and the, the training programs are really well tailored to the different countries in Europe. So when you do graduate, you can fairly straightforwardly um, apply for registration in different countries. So I've got registration now in, I think, about uh, three or four different countries in Europe, including uh, Norway and Malta, um, as well as UK and Ireland. And so it really gives you that latitude to, once you graduate, to really take your skills pretty much in any direction in, in the world, uh, in Europe, I mean. So um, what I found when I got there was that the clinicals, the, the sizes of the classes were very small. Um, so we had very small groups. And so our exposure to clinical work was very uh, focused and you often had time with a specialist more than I think in a lot of the, um, when, I, like, when I talk to my friends who were studying in England, they didn't often like there was often maybe 20 people or 30 people in a group so uh you know you get a lot more focused clinical time and that was really one of the big advantages i think the, the ability to basically go in and get more um clinical exposure which for dentistry at least was a huge deal because that really gave me confidence um, throughout the, the five-year program as I was going in doing loads of different kinds of dental treatments like extractions, root canals, crowns, all that stuff is your reference experience that really can make you um, a stronger in clinician in practice. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, I can't, I can't really encourage it enough because of the things it's afforded me those five years. Yes, they were tough. There were lots of exams and uh, lots of um, tests and challenges along the way, but that's going to be the case in any dental school you go to. Um, but the the upsides were just enormous in terms of the network, in the friends that I've made, but also the things that I can do now. The, the sky's really the limit in terms of, you know, um, if you, if it is just clinical dentistry you want to do, or if you want to be a practice owner or a multiple practice owner, or set up your own business. We have a dentist, a good friend of mine, Noel Abdem, who was also in Latvia. When he left dental school, he basically uh, he told me directly, he told everyone, actually, I, I never want to touch teeth again. I'm going to set my uh, business. And he now has set up a company called The Humble Brush, which is, and, and I don't work for them, this is not an advert. Uh, he has a, a company called The Humble Brush, which is a completely biodegradable brush, which is probably in a supermarket near you. So that's what, that is the scope of this kind of degree uh, when you when you really, you know, when you meet people from all across the world. And he set that up whilst he was in Latvia. So for the more business minded of you out there who may be thinking about getting a, a dental or a medical degree, for those reasons, that that scope is there, and you really don't need to wait for UK deadlines to acquire those skills. Like, why would you? Time is so precious, you know. Time is so precious, and it flies by. and And for me, the question at the time was, what's the risk of not taking this step? You know, what what would I be doing in in those five years if I wasn't doing something I really wanted to do? And when you ask yourself that question, it just becomes such an easy decision. It becomes a straight. For me, it was just a straightforward yes. I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to look back. And if I hadn't done that uh, degree, I, 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 it, it freaks me out actually to think what I would be doing right now because I, I just don't know. I can't answer that. I would be pretty lost. I think so. So um, there was a lot of there was a lot of upsides to it, and there continues to be, but still challenges because we're you know I'm trying to grow my business and trying to grow the practice that I'm I've just recently started. Uh, but it's all very exciting stuff, and I, you know, I highly, highly recommend um, taking that leap. Fantastic! Thank you so much for that insight. Uh, hearing about the the brush company there, I was almost expecting you to give us a discount code or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, I wish um, I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing to hear what you've been able to achieve, and I mean, four different country registrations is absolutely fantastic. That's commendable, and. Um, yeah, we've got so much respect for you for doing that and you can still hear the passion in your voice now even after all these years you're so passionate about it and helping others it's it's really a, a remarkable thing um 
the, the next thing we're going to move on to now uh, is just to talk about university transfers. So we've gone on to how the medical programs, the dental programs work, uh, as well as graduate entry. We want to talk a little bit about transfer situation. I'm going to pass over to my colleague Dana to discuss that with us now. So another main service offered by MedLink students is transfers. This is for students who want to change universities halfway through the course while you're studying medicine or dentistry. Now, the majority here are considering first year for October. However, we do have students who come to us asking us for transfers. And they tell us that they went to the university that is not suitable for them. It's not in an environment that uh, they're comfortable with. So in case you're one of these students, don't worry, we can certainly help you. You can take advantage of our expert doctor's experience in transfers, and we can help you transfer to another university where you can continue your studies without any interruptions. And the uh, most important thing to focus on here is that transfers are based on a case-by-case -case assessment. So it is a service that we can help you with. And if you're looking for a change, we can help you with transfers. Our doctors will guide you through taking a look at your transcripts, and then they'll tell you which universities would be best for you. Fantastic, Dana. Thank you for that. Um, so uh, from there, we're now going to go over some uh, living costs and tuition fees. Uh, Dana, can you tell us a little bit about um, what we can see here? Sorry. So another common question we get, uh, Tom, is how much are the fees? What, what's the budgeting students should expect? And many students are attracted to Europe because of the high standard of education and the affordable tuition fees. Most of students ask us, does it mean that if in Europe the tuition fees are cheaper than, for example, the UK or USA, does that mean that the quality of education is lower? Well. The answer here is that the fees are related to the or correlated to the quality to the location of the country. So the quality of education is not related to the tuition fees. It's related to the geographical country and to the economical situation of the country that the university you're studying in. As you can see on the screen here, we have a list of countries where we have mentioned the tuition fees per year and the living expenses per month. So whatever budget you have, we can definitely help you find a university where you can achieve your dream, study medicine, have a great experience without having any financial burden on you or on your parents. You can just focus on your studies and get the best standard of education possible. Thank you so much for that, Dana. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of people when, when I say to them, what sort of budget are we working with here? Um, sometimes they're a little bit hesitant um, to talk about it because they think that if you're going somewhere that's a lower cost, it means you're going to get less quality. But the cost really doesn't equate to the quality here. It is purely geographical and based on the location. So uh, moving on from there, uh, the next one is actually what we had in that first poll, uh, what people are looking forward to hearing from. Uh, it's actually about our admissions process, uh, how it all works uh, and how we can get you into medical school. Um, and what needs sorting. So I'm going to hand over now to uh, my colleague, Victoria. So Victoria is an admissions representative. Uh, she has helped so many students now get those successful applications in, working in the background, uh, making sure that everything is sorted and all the applications are developed correctly for the students. Uh, Victoria, uh, we can hear from you now. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Victoria and I'm part of the admissions department of meddling students. As Tom mentioned, a lot of students are really concerned about the academic requirements at these European universities. Now, you don't have to worry about any of them. And the reason is because most of the institutions require you just to have a high school diploma or the document equivalent from your own country high school system. You should usually have a strong background in the basic sciences. These are chemistry, biology, physics, and maths. Not all universities require this, of course, so you can speak to one of our representatives and they'll be able to let you know more about this. Some universities also require you to have a non-native, uh, uh, some universities that um, have also the requirement for English proficiency certificate. This is for the non-native speakers, of course. And 
of course, some of them have an entrance exam or an interview that have multiple choice questions or open questions. Sometimes they're combined. And uh, of course, not all of them have that. Some of them are without an entrance exam and they just look at your high school certificates and your subjects from high school. Now, as a graduate student, of course, you're, you're required to have a university transcript and some English fluency certificate to show that you are fluent in English so you, they can make sure that you get the most out of your education. The rest of the admissions team and I will handle all of the paperwork for you and make sure that the university admission process is as straightforward as possible for you. We will translate all of, your, all of your documents, get you your acceptance letter, provide revision materials, assist you with all the admission exams and interviews so uh, you can get into a university that you want. Our objective is to always help you and assist you with any way we can, uh, which is why we will guide you with the visa application processing if needed and give you instructions about the payment of tuition fees to the university. Well, we are here for you to help you throughout every step of the process to ensure that you're accepted to a medical university abroad. So don't be afraid about the criteria. Simply contact one of our trained advisors and they will be able to assist you with anything that you have questions about. Fantastic, Victoria. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Uh, so yeah, there's really a lot of variety even when it comes to the applications. And that's why we've got dedicated teams that are working around the clock to develop these applications and they check, double check and triple check everything to make sure that your file has everything that it needs to get you that successful application. Uh, so next up, uh, we've got another question. Uh, so we want to ask you this time, what are your top concerns about studying abroad? So we know that studying abroad can seem very daunting in the, in the beginning. Um, there can be so many worries um, and things that you're, you're not so sure about. So we want to try and find out which ones our audience are thinking about the most at the moment. So again, we can try to answer those. Uh, we're going to have plenty of students talking um, very shortly. So they're going to be able to share their own experiences on these concerns as well uh, and discuss some of those. Uh, so we'll just give it a couple of seconds there just for you to answer those questions. Okay, fantastic. So it looks like um, the uh, degree recognition has come out on top. Uh, which we've seen in the past, we've seen this. Um, it's obviously something that can be quite concerning. You know, I'm going to spend this much time abroad. Am I going to be able to come back and, and register within my country? Um, as you heard earlier from, from our dentist that we had on there, he's managed to register not just in his home country, but three others as well. Um, but it really varies, you know, with the, the university. And that's why we check the program so carefully to make sure that it's going to meet all the requirements that you need to get back into the country that you're looking for. Uh, so, uh, moving on from there, we're now going to have a look at some of the most popular universities and some of the top choices uh, so far for this year. Uh, let me just get this out of the way. Perfect. So, um, as you can see, again, there's a lot of variety here. Uh, variety and opportunity. Uh, you've got some places that are, are very affordable and suit a very good budget, like Georgia, for example. Um, you've got some places that maybe a bit closer to home. You know, somewhere like Poland is right in Central Europe, so it can be very convenient for people. Uh, but the main thing to consider here is that variety. And every single one of these schools, as I was mentioning before, has been checked and double checked by our team of doctors to ensure that they're giving that, that quality of education. And we know how the teaching styles work in these different universities. We know the curriculum. We know the lifestyle, the locations. So we can have these conversations with you and try to find the best suited options for you. But yeah, here's a few of the most popular. Uh, moving on from here, uh, I think now uh, we're going to be going yeah, into uh, talk about a few of the universities. So we'll start off with Georgia. This is where we've received one of the highest number of applicants for this year. Uh, it's a very affordable course. It's got very good uh, recognition across the world, um, but it's also uh, can be very accessible for a, a lot of different people as well. So we've got a, a student that's coming on uh, to speak now. Uh, let me just uh, double check. Uh, so that's uh, Ola that we've got to speak now. Uh, Ola, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Fantastic. Please tell us uh, a little bit about your experience in Georgia and, and how you found it. Okay, my name is Ola, and I found Georgia very, very accommodating because um, I got here about 
uh, three to four weeks ago, and the schools I've I've went to the school, the European University. This is my ID card. I went to the school, and the school is very beautiful. And their system of teaching, I've been uh, conducting classes with them online. The system of teaching is very nice, and uh, the whole uh, what's it called? The whole staffs were actually very nice. And um, regarding the accommodation here, it's about three hundred to four hundred dollars. You're gonna get a very nice accommodation. And uh, the citizens are very nice as well. And regarding the language barrier as well, because I saw that question, the most of the citizens, the young ones, can speak English, so the language barrier is not going to be really much of a problem. And um, yeah, the whole Georgia team is very okay. And uh, Medlink has been helping me with whatever I need because they've always been on a standby to help me with like accommodation, uh, helping with. Uh, working with this uh, school to pay my tuition, picking up from the airport and all. So my experience here is very lovely. I would advise anybody to work with Medic to come to Georgia. Thank you. Hi, thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. It's fantastic to hear about your experience. Um, and yeah, the language barrier, that's a concern that we get very commonly. So it's, it's great to have some, some reassurance there on that. Uh, I think we've got uh, another student here now for the European University in Tbilisi. Um, and that is Raja Kadir. Uh, are you with us now? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, yeah, I'm how here. are you? I'm good, how are you, yourself? Yes, very well, thank you. Uh, so we had a concern earlier. Um, we've had a few different concerns about, about people going to study abroad, you know, the lifestyle changes, the recognition. Is there something that stuck out to you as a concern before you went abroad? And what was it that helped you to overcome that? I mean, for me, it was, a little bit of, you know, settling into a whole different new space because obviously I went to um, university in Exeter and I actually had an offer again to do undergraduate for six years there again for medicine. Um, but obviously for me, that wasn't suiting my, like, you know, the life schedule I had plan for being 21, 22, going, trying to go into another six years of university was like a bit off-putting for me, I can't lie. So I was a bit, you know, daunting so leaving some place where I'm so comfortable. But the first couple of months in, I settled in quite nicely. Mendling helped me. The university staff helps you quite well as well. And um, it helps It helps to actually, you know, you go out experience. And for me, I can't lie, I've had quite a nice, pleasant experience because I, I wanted to travel quite a lot, to honest with you. And I wasn't able to do that early, early in my life. But then I've come to Georgia. I've traveled in Georgia. Traveled from Georgia because it's a cheaper to like this, like Turkey. I went for New Year's Eve. And also the education there was, like, it's really top-notch. Like, I was shocked. Because you had the fact that they use OSCEs for the English UK, because I know some Americans don't even do that, but they use OSCEs um, there as well for the uh, clinical experience. And that was really pleasant to see, because obviously that shows that when, when I will do my UK MLA in, fu in the future, I've already been trained in the step two, like the clinical side of it already in the style, which is really helpful, so, especially with the theoretical as well. It's very similar to like my lectures in Exeter University as well, in terms of... Um, having a lecture recorded online that be and it's interactive and it's like it was a bit obviously like everyone has it, it a, you know but that's the best thing about it like going into the unknown like and you seeing how pleasant it is and being able to do what I need to do now and then in the schedule that I wanted to because getting a four year offer here I honestly was for me next to impossible like competing like Osman said before dentists and so many masters and even PhD candidates as well. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. I almost feel like I needed a pen and paper just to note down all of the, the advantages and, and things that you were going through there. And now you, you obviously you studied at uh, Exeter University before in, in the UK. Is that right? Yeah, I'm actually actually in town right now for my graduation for that as well, which is Fantastic. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. a good experience there. Yeah, yeah, it was really good. I really had a great time, man. Yeah. And what, what I wanted to ask is, what are sort of the biggest differences and are there a lot of big differences between your studies that you did in Exeter and your studies in Georgia? Obviously they're, they're quite far apart um, and a lot of students are concerned that they may not get the same quality abroad as what they would get within the UK, for example. Um, obviously it would be like, like it would, to be honest, it would be unrealistic to say there's no differences. There are differences, but um, the one different example is that I think in abroad it's a bit more, it's, it's quite more detailed. For me, that I would feel like, you know, in Exeter, it was, you could get the broad spectrum of things and it wasn't that, you know, that hard. But in abroad, it is more detailed, in my opinion. 
There's um, they go in quite a lot of depth, and the way they assess stuff it took me a bit time to get used to. Like in excess, you know, people who've already got maybe gone uni already may know it's like you have two two big exam seasons, you know, February and uh, and also at the end of the year. But in uh, abroad, there you get assessed constantly on things as well, which is actually uh, for me a positive thing. Um, because it helps me keep on top of my work. It doesn't let me get lazy and complacent, which for a degree like medicine, I, I never wanted to do. So uh, that helps as well. But yeah, that was only the big difference. Apart from like, the style, how they approach um, um, you know, seminars and lectures and how they approach like, lab work, it's very, sim- very similar. Like that's the same style we used to do. It was they were, like even extra, because obviously COVID, they revamped the way of start studying. Like no one, they didn't really give lectures anymore in person. It was more, watch the record lecture online then come to the seminar and let's just spend all the time you know being interactive and going over seminar questions and seeing you know if you've actually taken a lecture and like to do at european university as well thank you very much for for going over all of that with us i think you've uh, made a lot of parents happy to hear that their students are going to be assessed a lot and there's no way that they can wiggle out of things and uh, and not be able to keep completely on track with these universities it's really good that they've got that level of discipline because even though a lot of these courses, they can be in some cases easier to get into than your home country, they are by no means easier courses. These are internationally recognized medical courses. So you really have to work hard and be very disciplined. So it's great when the university is pushing you in that direction. Uh, And thank you for joining us. Uh, We'll let you go and enjoy your uh, graduation now. Um, Also, you mentioned about the UK MLA. So just for those of you listening, uh, we will be going over the UK MLA a little bit later on in the webinar to give you some idea on uh, what that's all about as well. Uh, So I think we're we're moving on now uh, to the next country, um, which will be Serbia. Uh, I'm going to invite my colleague Dana uh, just to go through with a few of the students on the situation with Serbia and the the medical education there. Thanks, Dana. Another great option that we are working with is Niš University in Serbia. Now, Niš is one of the best universities in Serbia for medicine and English language. And what makes this university very popular is the very high standard of education that they have and the well-established program, in addition to the professors and the team working at the university. Students love the team that work at the university because they're very supportive. Uh, They have a very good relationship with them. So they're enjoying their experience Uh, over there and learning as much as they can. The university tuition fees are 5,500 euros per year. It's a six year program. It's fully taught in English language. And to make this even better, I'm not gonna talk too much. I'm gonna introduce to you one of our students in niche, Anika, and she can share her experience with you. Anika? Hello, Dana, good evening. Good evening. Can you tell us a little bit more about the university? You study medicine. Yes, I'm studying already in the second year. I just completed it. Um, I joined uh, Niche University in 2020. And as you mentioned, I chose this university um, because of the low tuition fee, of course. Um, The small groups, um, uh, when I started, they just took, I think, 25 applicants for a batch. Uh, Now it will slightly increase, but anyhow, we are studying in really nice small groups. Um, then the third aspect is that uh, Niche University is uh, very easy to reach, especially from Germany. Um, I fly like one hour 50 and um, the airport is also very close to the faculty. I think I need 10 minutes or 15 minutes by taxi, which is really nicely located. So it makes even possible just to fly home at the weekend during the non-exam phase. And yeah, uh, the hospitals uh, for the rotation and which starts in the third year uh, are also beneficial because they are just, most of them are just opposite of our faculty. Um, So you can save a lot of time. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of young professors uh, which guide us through the program and are our mentors. Um, the nice aspect is that they are always to reach via Viber. So if we have any concerns, we can just you know contact them via our Viber or our learning pl- platform where we get all our um, presentation for the practical and theoretical part of the lectures. 
which makes life so much easier. So you always know uh, what to prepare for the next lecture. And you can go through all the presentations if you missed something. And so it's a really nice tool. And uh, we have some office clerks um, in the secretary who helps us with the paperwork, um, with the registration at the faculty, getting our index, um, if we have any questions about visa or finding even a flat to make a phone call or something. Um, so any questions which we have, we always find someone and there's always someone who will help us and guide us through the processes at the faculty. And yeah, that makes life really easier. Um, I think that I would forget to have this uh, luxury in Germany, to be honest. Um, for now, the practical classes we had, thanks God, at the faculty. Um, they are sometimes at the more in the morning, sometimes um, they are late in the evening or at the late afternoon. It depends on the subject. The theoretical classes were most cases at home. We are just reading through our material and uh, studying by, by our own. And uh, yeah, what else I can mention? Um, the, the building, uh, the, the university building as um, I think four years ago, it was uh, completely renovated inside. It has, um, it is equipped with modern technology. Uh, as well, we have a pretty new hospital, um, which is also just four years old, um, which gives you really a good, nice feeling to be in a new hospital and, you know, gain your experience and your knowledge there, which is really amazing. And um, as I read and as I can say from my side, um, Niche is really, really well organized. I think Niche University is one of the modest, modern universities, uh, at least in Niche. And um, yeah, I'm really thankful that I can study there for for um, a small amount of money for an international degree, which I could not get anywhere, I think, so far. Thank you. Thank you, Anika, for this explanation. It looks like you're having uh, issues with your camera. We couldn't see you. Oh, I'm very sorry. Yes, I forgot to turn it on. <laughs> no problems. We'd like to see you. Uh, Anika, can you tell us a little bit more about the city and uh, the diversity in the university and the city? Uh, yes, um, the city is not that huge. Um, you can just go inside to the city um, within 20 minutes by foot. So it's pretty close. Um, there are a lot of facilities like you can go for shopping. There are enough clubs or cinemas where you can sp spend your time at the weekend. Uh, when you don't need to study. And um, what else I can mention? Um, we have uh, people from a lot of countries, like especially at our faculty, we have guys from the UK, we have from Saudi Arabia, from, from Germany, from Egypt, from, from Norway. Now we are, also have Pakistan, Canada. So it's, it's very diverse and it makes so much interesting to get in touch with all those people from different countries and, you know, to exchange knowledge, information, and that makes the study uh, much, much valuable, to be honest. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Anika. Um, that was a really nice explanation about the university, about the campus. Uh, I'm sure students are loving it, loving hearing about this. So would you recommend the students to go to Serbia to niche? I would recommend it fully, to be honest. Um, maybe what I can mention. Uh, when I reached there in 2020, I was a little surprised because, you know, everyone uh, has its own standards and expectations. Um, I was at the time um, very happy that I get the position and the option to study there. But as you know, uh, Serbia is a EU member. Uh, and they're doing so much on the infrastructure and niche is, um, I don't know how to say, it's a very uh, underestimated country. And uh, I think that a lot of people don't know so much about niche and about Serbia and they should really give it a try because it's, 
it's just beneficial for them. All right, lovely, fantastic. Thank you very much, Anika. Um, we still can't see you. I don't know what, uh, maybe you have an issue with your camera. Yes, I think so, because yes. actually, I'm very sorry for that. No worries, we hope next time to see you. Yes, for sure. All right, so that's about Serbia, everyone. Thank you, Donna. That was, uh, it was great to hear from Anika there about her experiences um, and just to, to get some insight from her. Um, it always brings joy to us as advisors to, to hear how well the students are getting on. So uh, we've got our third and final question here. Uh, what excites you most about studying medicine or dentistry abroad? Uh, as you've heard now, there's a bit of an opportunity there um, and there's lots, uh, a few different answers um, that you can uh, choose from. I'm just watching the lines going now, um, seeming fairly even. So that's great that there, there's so many people still that are there to embrace a new culture because that, that just allows you to enjoy your time abroad that bit more. Uh, you know, you're going to a fantastic degree, but also being able to enjoy the culture. Um, that's fantastic. Being part of an international medical community. That's a great one as well, because these communities of international students in the most popular countries are just growing year on year at the moment. And we're seeing all of these new events that they're planning and student unions. And yeah, it's a fantastic thing to see. So I think we've we've finished now. Um, yeah, so gaining a degree that allows me to work in my home country. Of course, um, this is the most important thing. This is why you're here. We understand that. And that's what we are here to help you to do. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, I think we're moving on now to uh, Romania. So, Dana, I'm going to pass back to you now uh, to go through a few questions um, with some of our students in Romania. Hopefully, a few of them have put their cameras on so we can see those smiles. Thank you, Dana. So, another great option is Romania, as you mentioned. Romania is very popular for its history, its arts. It's a really lovely country to go visit. People go there on holidays. It's a very nice country. And it's been offering medicine and dentistry for years. It's been offering it for more than 10 years. So they have, they have very well established programs. They, they offer medicine, dentistry, and veterinary, as you can see in front of you on the screen. And some universities have entrance exams, some don't have, and some have interviews. Tuition fees are, um, range between 5,000 euros up to 9,500 euros. And one of our best universities is Grigor Tipopa in a city called Yash. Their tuition fees are 7,500 euros per year. It's a six year MD program and living expenses are also uh, very affordable around 700 euros per year. Again, um, I would like to introduce one of our students, Mouahib. Mouahib, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Would you tell us a little bit about your experience in, uh, in Grigor Tipopa University? Yes, actually. Um, so I'm here, like I just finished my first year. I came here last year to study uh, medicine. So the city is called Yash. So it's like the second biggest, I think, state in Romania. And I actually liked it here because it's kind of student oriented. It would actually make you feel like you're home and it's so safe and people are just so friendly here. Like amazingly, it's something when I, when I, when I was coming, I did not think like people were friendly this much, no matter like regardless of what race you are, people are really welcoming here. And uh, yeah, and actually the best thing that everyone looked looks for when they want to go to university. Everyone has a lot of concern, but at the end of the day, as a student, we all have the same concerns. So the first concern that we have is basically like uh, the degree recognition and the education quality and a lot more. So for the degree recognition for me, the fact that I can study here in a price that I love without you know spending a lot of money and to have some debt just to pay as soon as I finish, because medicine is six years to begin with. So when I came to Romania with that amount of tuition fee, what I'm learning is kind of the same of what anyone would learn in Harvard, because at the end of the day, as a university student, you should have to help yourself. You should have to study by yourself. So what matters is your diploma or your degree. And the degree that you're gonna get here, basically, you will study 
you can, I mean, you can work anywhere in Europe. Just, you know, and Medlink would help you with that process. After you finish from here, your work and also everything that they need, because I think uh, between the European Union, I don't know if you guys are aware about Romina is uh, one of European Union. So if you have degree there, they have some credit, like when you're even transferring or when you want to work somewhere between European countries, like it's allowable, even if you want to go to work USA and everything, all you may need is to do some exams. So it's not going to be the same paying 85K for a university and, you know, paying the money, being happy here, studying well, and then passing some exams and working whatever you want. So, yeah, I'm happy. Lovely, fantastic. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about the classes in the university and the students' diversity and how the classes are with the professors? Yeah, yeah. Actually, the fun thing is when you come here, like, you just gonna get learn to like a lot of cultures, a lot of the people here are so diverse in our class. Like we are from everywhere, literally everywhere. It's so like, I mean, and it's so nice to be in such kind of environment. Plus, um, I think especially uh, uh, Grigori Popa, there is a new building that's opened, like a brand new, like Lyon building. And they have everything like, you know, it's so amazing. And the professors are friendly. So the education also, you have everything in the platform of the university. You can get everything you want there. All you need is to access with your email and uh, the exams, everything, everything is like posted, like you get updated and everything. So I think it's so nice here. All right, great. Thank you very much for your participation, um, Wahib. Um, you're welcome. Thank you very I know much. that you're fasting today and you need to break your fast. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I was, it was so nice to share my experience. Great, thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Tom. Fantastic. Thank you, Dana, uh, for going over some of the uh, Romanian students for us there. Uh, so next up, I think we're going to be discussing uh, Bulgaria. Uh, Bulgaria is one of the most popular countries, again, that, that we work with at the moment um, for a lot of students um, from all across Europe, the UK, the US, um, for good reason. They've been doing their courses for a very long time now in English. They've got a lot of experience in some really good uh, international communities. Um, so I want to start by inviting one of our students through, Ashali, uh, to come and speak to us about their experience. Ashali? Uh, hi. Hi. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you found Bulgaria when you first went there to begin with uh, and how you how you grew into the course and the location? Uh, so basically, Bulgaria is uh, a very nice place to study. And when I came here, I was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm basically a transfer student. I wanted to change my university. And uh, when I spoke to Medlinks, um, they suggested me uh, some of the universities in Bulgaria. So I had applied for two of them. And uh, when I came here, I wasn't too happy because uh, I thought I'm gonna have a language barrier and I didn't know a lot about the country. And, um, but uh, as soon as I landed, I had everything in place. Uh, Medlinks uh, had somebody pick me up at the airport and uh, uh helped me with the admission procedure here for the registration and everything went on very smoothly i got my accommodation done as well uh and yeah it's a very good place to study i would say perfect and how have you found the the university itself and the the teaching there yes yeah, so i study at the trachea university and i really like it a lot I think it's a very good approach that they have, where we are divided into small groups and everyone is given personal attention. If you have any difficulties, you can approach the professors anytime and they are always willing to help. Uh, they speak a good level of English and uh, uh, the infrastructure is adequate enough to uh, support our education. Uh, yeah, so I like the university a lot. I think it's very friendly. We have a very diverse group of students studying here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. I enjoy studying here. 
Uh, one thing that I get asked a lot when people are looking at uh, Trakia University is actually what the city is like there, because we know it's a little bit of a smaller location um, than some of the big names like Sofia. What's your experience of the, the lifestyle there? Uh, so basically, uh, Stara Zagora is a smaller place compared to Sofia and Plovdiv, but uh, Plovdiv is only one hour away from here, so uh, it's it's okay. And uh, we don't have a lot to do with, uh, uh, in Stara Zagora, but uh, especially since I come from London, uh, but uh, we do have uh, student uh, uh, groups that organize activities like badminton and, uh, you know, other sports events. So it's it's really nice. And we it, I feel like this atmosphere supports uh, the kind of studying that is required. We really need to work hard to get through the medical subjects. So I think I like this uh, kind of place better. It's, it, it doesn't distract me a lot. So, yeah. And if I ever feel bored or ch I need a change in scenery, I just go to Blog Dave or Sophia. Fantastic. So it's quite a nice uh, international student community that you've got there, would you say? You're yeah, definitely. Yeah, and sports and things and clubs. Uh, yes, yeah, definitely. We have students from the UK, from Greece, Sweden, uh, India, Pakistan. Fantastic. Uh, it's great to, great to hear a good insight from you there. And, and thank you very much for sharing with us all. Um, next up, I want to bring on uh, Osman, who's going to be talking a little bit about his own personal experience. Uh, Osman, are you with us? Oh, if, if, you're, if you're available to speak yeah. with us. Uh, OK, so uh, regarding Bulgaria in general, I studied at uh, Varna Medical University. I studied dentistry. Uh, I really enjoyed the experience. When I first considered going abroad, it was a very scary idea. I thought Bulgaria, I've never heard of them. Uh, I don't know much about this uh, country. I've never heard of this university, but eventually I researched it. And uh, it took me three years to build up the courage to see the opportunity that is available in Bulgaria. Eventually I booked, uh, booked uh, some tickets traveled to Bulgaria. I uh, went with my brother and uh, I saw that it's a great country and uh, it, it really impressed me basically with, especially with the university, it was nice. Uh, it's just as you would see a university in the UK where there's classrooms, there's dental chairs, there's plenty of opportunity for practical experience. And uh, uh, plenty of students from all sorts of places from the world. I met people from China, from Korea, from all of Europe, from Africa, from the Middle East. So many students from the UK. Um, a lot of students from the UK and Germany specifically in this uh, university uh, and across Europe in general. Uh, I, I thought it was a great opportunity. So eventually I applied. The only issue I had was that I visited the university without checking the deadline. And uh, then I arrived and the university told me you can't apply anymore because the deadline has passed. So I had to wait one more year. And uh, I do advise students to not make the, this mistake, to uh, definitely check out the deadlines when they consider going abroad. Uh, it's really important. Another thing is safety, for example. I, I thought it was just as safe as any place in the UK where I had been. And uh, the only issue would be a communication barrier because you're going abroad to a completely different country uh, with a different culture. And uh, th that's where I found the most support from the meddling team and uh, the help that I received and the advice. Uh, so thank you there, uh, Tom. Yeah, you thank on you. To Florian. Uh, I wasn't aware that before about um, you, you missing that deadline there. It's quite funny you say that because I think it's the deadline for... Um, Varna Medical University that we're going to talk about now is actually tomorrow for us to get started on the applications. Um, so for a few of the other universities, we've got a little while, but we really need to get started a lot. If you're looking to go this year, and we're kind of into the last moments now. Uh, so uh, Flo, if you could tell us uh, a little bit about your experience. I know you've uh, got into your final year now, I, I believe, of uh, medical studies in Varna. Is that right? Yes, this is correct. Uh, so I'm a fifth year medical student. Currently, I'm having my exam season or last two exams of this year. And then we're off to the last year, the practical year. Um, yeah, basically, same thing. Applied at home. I'm from Austria. Didn't get in. 
it's a, in Austria, it's a long process to get into medical school. It takes like, um, you only can apply once a year. So you start losing years and at some point you're getting old and you want to. Do... I think we might have just lost you for a second there. Um, I'll give you a second just, just to come back through. Um, but yeah, that's another interesting point that you've brought up there. I speak to students sometimes that have applied in their own country, like the UK, for example, five years in a row. Um, and seeing those statistics from earlier, every year it's only getting harder. Sometimes it just gets to a point in our minds where we think, no, this year I have to be taking some steps forward. I can't keep repeating it. And that's one of the opportunities that, that studying abroad you know, really gives you. Uh, Flo, are you, are you back with us? I think we've... Flo will join shortly. I think he's disconnected. That's fine. That's fine. No problem. Um, so in the meantime, then, uh, I'll talk a little bit about uh, Varna Medical University. So it's quite a popular one uh, because it's based on the coast. It's a nice coastal city. Um, a lot of people uh, that are looking for, for that nice kind of environment uh, can find it with Varna. It's uh, the third largest city um, in Bulgaria. Um, and it's, it's a very nice place. Uh, so we'll move on from there for now. We might come back to Flo in a little while um, and allow him to uh, go in a bit more detail there. So we're going to move on to Poland. I want to bring in my colleague, Edmund, who's going to talk to us a little bit about Poland. Edmund, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Tom. So <clears throat> Poland really has become one of, the, one of the best destinations for students to pursue medicine and dentistry. Uh, medicine in Poland is around, it's about six years. Um, and so you graduate as a doctor of medicine, so as an MD, um, and then dentistry is five years. And so you graduate there as a doctor of dental surgeon. Now, there are over 23 uh, fantastic medical and dental schools across the country. And each school teaches medicine or dentistry in English. And they produce one of the great dentists and doctors over there. And all these schools have very good modern uh, facilities to keep up to date with the medical and dental studies uh, to ensure that you receive a good quality of education. Now, the tuition fees in Poland usually ranges from 11,000 euros up until 15,000 per annum. Um, now, one of the, the schools that a lot of our students have been attending, um, that we've had a lot of students apply to, is a university called Medical University of Silesia. Now, this is a school that's in the south of Poland, um, in a city called Katowice. Uh, we have students from all over the world studying there. You know, students from the UK, we've got Irish students there, we've got students from Australia, the US. It's very, very much worldwide. We've got students from Norway. Um, one of the students, actually, who is here to talk about his experience uh, as an undergraduate student doing medicine is a student from Norway called Ayub. Ayub, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, could you tell us a bit more about your experience as a student in uh, Silesia? Well, it's an honor to be here. And um, yeah, it was pretty scary from the start. From the beginning, it was uh, very scary. <laughs> I remember when I got started with the process, I was excited you know, to um, go abroad and you know, do medicine, something that I've dreamt of for a long and tried in Norway. And um, as you know, I have a degree from uh, a clinical a science related degree and work for like two, three years at a hospital lab. And uh, then you realize that, you know, every year you wait, you could have been a second year medical student, you could have been a third year medical student if you have started two, three years ago. <laughs> and so then I decided to, you know, um, start my journey of um, maybe going abroad through meddling. And, you know, this fear of some students right now who are maybe uh, thinking of applying or going abroad is very legitimate. I had the same concerns and fears about leave family behind and, you know, job and, you know, loved ones. And, but then, you know, we humans, we are the ultimate adaptation machines. We get adapted and then you uh, start to settle and things get better. And um, the University of, uh, Medical University of Thailand is a fantastic university. Um, very international. And what I like the most about my school, especially my class, is that it's not a big size class. We are seven years student in my uh, uh, European program. You have access to professors and well-equipped lab. And uh, But then you get shocked from the, I remember when I had my first uh, uh, 
molecular biology class and I had to do a test in first day of class. And so there was this, you know, ongoing uh, intensity. You have to, you know, keep on top of things. You know, you have to have like tests every week, every other week throughout the semester. Very intense, but also very positive because it keeps you on top of things, right? And so, in fantastic city, if you have the time and, you know, outside of study, of study schedule, you do a lot of fun stuff, nice restaurants and nice people. Language is a problem, but uh, for the most part, you know, young people speak English, so you get around really well. And um, because my country, Norway, is very strict when it comes to students going abroad to study. And so they would like to know which university are you going to study? Is they going to be um, recognized when you get in fact to know to practice medicine? Is that a possibility? And so how to present the list, you know, or the name of the university to the, to the uh, system, to the government, or people responsible to send me abroad. And then I got approved, you know, so that tells it all about the university. So it's a university where you, you obtain a degree and it's uh, internationally recognizable. So I advise anyone, you know, to, you know, going abroad, that's something to consider, you know, a destination to consider going to Poland. Very central, easy to travel. You can, you know, take a weekend off, go back to the UK, somewhere around Europe, if you're from around Europe. And you have like around four months, four months of, you know, vacation in total during a school year. You can also do a lot of stuff, right? That's fantastic. What, uh, what difficulty did you face when you first got there? And, and what did you do to overcome it? It was, you know, living from, I've been in Norway more than, you know, half of my Kimbia when I was a kid and got used to the system, you know, and it's very calm over here. And it has a lot to do, it had a lot to do with the cultural, you know, difference, right, between Norway and Poland. So you meet professors that are very straight, it doesn't mean they are, they are nasty or bad, but <laughs> tough love, as you call it. And of course, then Mohamed Mo, you know, he's on here right now. He was very helpful, you know, through meddling, you know, got me settled very easy. You know, every time I have concerns about courses and stuff, he was around to help with things. And, and you always have to go back to your inner drive, your motivation, you know, what got me here in the first place. And sometimes things get tough, man. You just want to pack your bags and go home, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with studies and all. But you have to, you know, just keep pushing because people have done it and I'm doing it and <laughs> you can do it. Yes, fantastic. And as, the, as, you, as you say, it, it becomes a community because everyone helps each other as, exactly. uh, as, as best as they can. That's great. Well, we can't, see how, we can't wait to see how your journey unfolds and can't wait for you to graduate and become a doctor. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks a lot. And I'm thankful for meddling as well. <laughs> ah, you're you. welcome. Always happy to help you. Um, yeah, another student who, um, has also, who is studying uh, at uh, Celestia, uh, Emeka, who is doing graduate entry over there. Um, Emeka, are you there? Hi, yes, I am. Ah, how are you? How are you? I'm oh, good, thanks. Can you see me okay? Yes, we can see you. Could you share a bit about your kind of your background and what brought you to Celestia? So I was, uh, so I was um, currently at another European medical school um, that I kind of researched by myself and um, after about a year there, um, I saw how the system was and it was a system that was really against students. And then obviously COVID happened. And then I literally went onto Google and just searched, you know, and MedLinks came up. And then literally after one conversation with you, Edmund, I just decided, yeah, it's definitely in my best interest to um, transfer over to Poland. And uh, I... I transferred onto the graduate program because I did a degree in the UK prior to this. And so, you know, I was happy I did that. And literally every step of the way, it was, um, I was guided, the documents I needed to bring. I literally just gave all my stuff to um, MedLinks and like, you know, I was like, oh, good luck, here you go. And they literally did everything. They translated all the documents, they, um, sent off everything they needed to send off. Like I wasn't going to the post office every second to mail things over to Poland. It was all done for me. And then literally they sent, um, they just sent me, oh, this is your acceptance letter pending. Um, I complete the entrance exam. So, you know, that's the, that's the, it's the easiest process I've ever, I've ever gone through in terms of joining an institution, you know, 
whether it whatever level of education so I found it really helpful you know following that process fantastic thank you how as you've been studying there how have you found the practical classes or being in the hospital so um we've just finished our last exam um a few a few uh days ago um um I, I passed everyone hold the applause no need um and so it was <laughs> um so we usually do um hospital work so in 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 my university we have um something called physical diagnosis and we also have clinical analysis and you do those courses during the initial um years where you're doing all the you know anatomy physio pharmacology you know all your basic sciences and so we're kind of like thrown into the into the hospital straight away and so we met, we met patients we did exams um you know like physical exams on the patients so right from the onset we're like exposed straight to patients and hospitals and you know it was amazing and i've just finished my basic sciences now so next um next semester which it will be september october time i'll be starting full time in the hospital so i wouldn't be in the classroom anymore i'll be full time in the hospital and so i'll be interacting with patients meeting with other doctors from department to department you know so and the hospital itself is amazing it's big there are so many there's there's on the Celestia campus, there's two massive hospitals, one of which they're just expanding. They've just expanded and another one they're refurbishing. And so like, it's amazing, two hospitals right on the campus. And then there's also other hospitals affiliated with the university off the campus as well. So it's it's really good. Like, you know, you have, you have access to hospitals straight away. You're, a lot of our professors also work in the hospitals. So a lot of our classes are very clinically orientated, which for me is very interesting because I, I don't like lectures where they're just reading off the slides. I really love the whole, give me like your experience. I wanna know what you've done. And so the lecturers are always telling us about patients, you know, they found this, they found that, this tumor, that tumor. And it's just, it keeps you interested and it really makes you want to, to study harder and work harder, you know, in your course, when you, when you can kind of get that taste of how life would be when you're done, you know, when, once you've graduated. So yeah, good, very good, very good um, education and exposure right from the onset, I would say. Fantastic. Hey, well done on your exams, by the way. You know what it's like to, to, to go okay. through all the, the grueling exams, period. Uh, as you've been in the hospital, how have you found the facilities? Because this is something we get asked a lot. What are the facilities like? So something I learned recently was they actually adhere to like all the standards. You know, they use um, they use uh, like the Glasgow Coma Scale. They use the TNM. Um, so these are like um, kind of diagnostic tools that you use. You know, the pain scale, that's another common one. So they're using all the recommended um, measurements and charts and, you know, tests that you would if you were in the UK, the US, Canada, wherever, you know, so they're not using like some prehistoric or ancient um, methods, you know, they're using up to date measures, up to date measures that are all, you know, they're all like um, provided, you know, on the like, um, I think the WHO website where you know you need to follow all those kind of guidelines so you're not getting anything different from what you would really from like a uk hospital apart from maybe you know you look out the window and you see like maybe the city of london whereas there you see the city of katowice so that's really just the the main difference the hospital is nice equipment's good you know we're using all up-to-date up-to-date equipment so i don't really see that much of a difference and i've I've been in hospitals here in the UK. I've worked in hospitals and private clinics here in the UK. So I have like something to compare it to, you know, as opposed to maybe the average student. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Uh, and, and the final question for you um, is we have students watching tonight. Some who have been with us for a few, some have been watching us for a few years and still unsure whether to take that step. What advice would you give those students who are looking to either start this year or just seeing what's out there and listening to your, your experience? 
Well, I would say that, like, if I could go back in time and start again from 18, there's a lot I'll do differently. But one of the things I would definitely do is to do this process so much earlier. And time is precious. You don't know how long you have left. And I would I would say that I, I really do regret the time I wasted not going through this process. So for those that are unsure, for those that, you know, don't know whether they need to take this next step. If you know that medicine or dentistry is something you really want to do, stop wasting time because at the end of the day, the UK, the US, wherever you're from, they need doctors. Uh, I know you guys went over all the statistics, but um, I think the, um, the UK is drastically behind Europe in terms of the, the, the doctor to patient ratio. And so they need, there's, there's never a worse time than now to just go ahead and do this, especially after COVID, you know, all that's happened, the amount of, um, the amount of doctors that are retiring, you know, it's, if you go to the NHS now, like, and you walk in and you see a doctor, you're likely to see a doctor that's, you know, trained outside of the UK. So if you're just holding on to that hope of, oh, I want to stay in the UK, I want to do it in the UK or the US or wherever you are, you know, I think you're just wasting those prime years of, you know, when you're the most passionate and, the, you know, the most dedicated to do this, because as, it, as time goes by, you're only going to get less passionate about it. As you start working in other places, if you start work elsewhere, you start to get comfortable, you start to get complacent. And I almost didn't come back to medicine. And hence why I say, I wish I went earlier. I almost, I was very close. I got a good job offer and I was very close to just being like, okay, do you know what? But something told me, come back, you know, find out if there's a way for you to maybe do a postgrad course, and which I did. And so I'm so happy I came back and I'm so happy I took that next step. So don't be afraid to, definitely. Thank you. That was very inspiring. We hope this, you know, encourages a lot of the students listening tonight to, to hopefully take that step like you have done. Thank you so much for joining us. No worries. You take um, care. Another... And thank you. Another student uh, who was also studying at uh, Medical University of Silesia, Mohammed, um, who has been a very great part of the team, also helping out with students over there. And Mohammed, could you tell us a bit about your experience? Okay, of, sure, of course. Hello. Um, so yeah, my name is Mohammed Iman, and I'm from England, and I wanted to do medicine in England after high school, but uh, unfortunately, what happened was that I didn't meet the minimum requirements. So like my applications were top, I was told that my applications would just not even be considered, of course. So that's why I considered studying abroad. So at first I chose another agency and they helped me with pre-med process. And I actually started studying at Warsaw University of Medicine. Uh, Warsaw is the capital city of Poland, um, but I ran into some issues and I then contacted Medlink and they helped me to transfer my first year subjects at Warsaw and move to Katowice. So that's where I am now, uh, Medical University of Stisa. And uh, everything starting from uh, application till today, so a second year student, uh, has been great. Like, I think it was a great decision for me to choose to study here. Uh, to study in Poland, to study medicine here. Uh, I think it was a great decision. So uh, I actually made some notes. So um, I'll talk about like the admission process. So as I said, I was at Warsaw University and uh, I, had to, I wanted to transfer to Katowice. So Medlink helped me with transfer of the modules and subjects that I finished, passed and completed in Warsaw. So I was exempted from repeating them when I came to Katowice, so I only had to do whatever was left. So then I finished the first year and also at the university, the dean's office, so the administration team was so much better than Warsaw University. And I'm really happy with their, uh, with their work and their ability to uh, help students and, their, and just getting jobs done and things like that. Uh, so my admission exam, uh, it was actually during the time of COVID, so it might, my personal experience of the entrance now might be different to everyone else, uh, what it is to today, but it was an oral online uh, test, and I had a selection 
to choose from two subjects, two questions per subject, and I had to talk about them for five minutes, and I had a few minutes to prepare. So the entrance exam was, I mean, like if you compare it to the minimum three A's as well as uh, work experience, uh, as well as volunteering and all these other things that you need to study medicine in the UK. So choosing to uh, do an entrance exam and study in Poland was a much better experience. Um, and the Medical University of Silesia, so as the other two students, they may have said some things already, but uh, there's great ratio between seminar and practicals. Uh, so that for me, someone who's like dyslexic, I actually find that so much better. Uh, so I was happy with the, the way of teaching. The teachers speak great English uh, and there's like no issue with understanding what the teachers say or anything like that. And actually Polish is even taught in the course. So uh, you have the ability to after the second year, when you finish the 120 hours of Polish, you have a great basic knowledge of Polish and living in Poland becomes so much easier. Um, and also in the later years, when you do see patients, it will be so much easier too. Um, and I'm part of the European program. So the international program is the other program that's in the English division. And this program has the ability to have graduate entry and it's more closely related to the American uh, medical system. Uh, education system and so in the European one you have very early patient um, like hospital exposure like you get to go to the hospital do uh, radiology so look at CT scans in your second year which I think is great uh, and you have a lot of elective classes that supplement your uh, basic teaching uh, things like patient doctor dialogue uh, psychiatry uh, and also, um, you get to learn more about the patients. So third year is when we actually see patients and go to the hospital for rotations. But starting from second year, you're already like learning about getting the ropes and the, as you see in scrubs, uh, and it's great. And also uh, living in Poland as well. So living in Poland, at first I was quite scared about the language barrier because I was told that Polish is one of the top 10 hardest languages to learn in Europe, but very quickly and very easily I was able to adapt to any issues I had. So for example, grocery shopping, and I wanted to ask them where the bread is, but I didn't know how to say in Polish. Uh, you would just get like a translator app, like Google Translate, and very quickly and easily, uh, without much of an effort, you would be able to do grocery shopping. And Katowice as a city itself is uh, a quite small city compared to the other cities, but it's actually the 16th biggest uh, and it's a student city. So there's a lot of different universities, university of economics, the medical university, as well as all these campuses that are close to the city. So you can have the opportunity to meet a lot of international st students when you go out or when you uh, use Facebook, for example, and look at community events. Um, and Katowice is also a very safe city. So I don't know if you've seen in the newspaper, probably you've heard about uh, the politics in Poland and how LGBT friendly and uh, homophobia, Islamophobia, et cetera. So for me personally, I've had zero issues in Katowice and Warsaw. So I think that's great also. And that's important for students who want to think about studying uh, in Poland. I think there's not much of an issue actually. Um, and living costs, like uh, as you can, well, I've blurred it out, but living in apartments uh, at this price and the living cost I endure now comparing to what I would, if I compare it to England, so the same amount of money, I would be getting half of what I'd be getting here. So living in Poland compared to, for, for someone who's British and uh, has that comparison, or also other countries in Europe as well, uh, it's much greater. Um, and living costs are great. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I've covered everything. Thank you so much. I mean, you've uh, you've answered all the questions that we were we, yes. we had prepared for you. That's been fantastic. Um, thank you so much for the experience you've shared. And we we just can't we we've loved having you join us as as part of the team and also uh, helping us with all the students that are arriving, um, with settling in and, and the community that you're you know you're getting them involved in. So thank you. We we just can't wait to see. 
how your journey goes. Thank you so much. Over to no you, problem. Tom. Thank you, Edmund. Fantastic to hear from the students there in Poland uh, about their experiences uh, and sharing it with all of us this evening. It's always the highlight of our month as advisors to hear from them. So uh, we've heard a lot of positives there. Um, we're now going to bring up something as a little bit of a warning, of a caution, because as with anything in life, you've got to be careful. You've got to do your due diligence and you've got to make sure that you're, you're choosing the right options. So I'm going to pass over to, to Osman now to talk a little bit about uh, the GMC warning list. They're really helpful in the UK in showing us what kind of universities we, we need to watch out for. Thanks, Osman. Yes, uh, perfect. Thank you, Tom. Absolutely essential points because all of you here, you said that, or a lot of you said recognition is extremely important for you to go back home. Now, we chose one country, for example, where the majority of our students, but not all, come from, which is the UK. And we wanted to explain to you the process of recognition because you'd find that a lot of agencies or organizations that are uh, helping students go abroad are not very transparent and open about this. However, with us, when you approach a group of doctors, dentists, and experts who are looking out for your best interests, we're always gonna give you the facts. We're always gonna ensure that you know and you are making an informed decision on the recognition so you can come to a university where you'll be able to graduate and go back home uh, and practice as a doctor successfully without any issues with the recognition. Now, the GMC list is the General Medical Council. These are, this is the regulatory body for doctors who practice in the UK, as well as also accepting doctors and regulating the uh, registration of doctors who come from abroad. Now, this is, for example, for people who want to work in the UK, you're going to have to, when you graduate, apply with the GMC. Now, this is where it becomes extremely essential that you you should have done your research before you go abroad. And this is where we come in and we're gonna advise you and make sure that you're fully informed. Now the GMC, some, we found some agencies who would use the term accredited by the GMC, an overseas university accredited by the GMC. Or for example, they would say, uh, especially about a university that's listed on the may accept list. Now the GMC has two lists they do not have an accepted list because then they would be listing uh, hundreds, even thousands of universities across the world. What they do have instead is a warning list for students to consider and take into consideration when considering going abroad. I'm using the word consider a lot. It's very important that you think very carefully. That's what my purpose of, of uh, this uh, presentation is. So the GMC has an outright list that says, universities we do not accept whatsoever. And these universities, we will always warn you about them and ensure that you do not set foot in these universities because the GMC does not accept these universities. Now, there's also another list by the GMC that says we may accept this university. Now, the reason this, the GMC lists such a university in their list is because some of the courses in that university do not meet the criteria of acceptance set by the GMC meaning whether they don't meet the hours, the credits, and several other criteria the GMC will have that we would inform you about uh, for some of their courses. Now, as you can imagine, this can be, of course, risky. You can make sure that the, you must make sure that the GMC has your university uh, without any warnings, without anything uh, that might impact your ability to register with the GMC. So you have to make sure the university meets the criteria of the GMC. Uh, we noticed, uh, for example, some people that would say uh, about overseas or Georgian universities, for example, that, uh, or we can say any other university uh, or country, where they would say this university is accredited by the GMC. Now, this is a huge red flag. Why? Because the GMC does not accredit universities abroad. The GMC simply assesses the application of the, G uh, of the university that you would come back with, your diploma, your transcript, and so on. And that's where we will help you to ensure that you're not going to set foot in a university that will create any problems for you when coming back to the UK. Now, or for example, people that say uh, university that uh, an acceptable list of universities using some directory that the GMC has. 
Uh, now we have plenty of information about this on our website and you can always contact us to ensure that you're making the right decision and that you're best informed on your future and ability to return back to the UK, meaning that you're gonna meet the regulations, you're gonna meet the requirements in the local country as well as also abroad, uh, as well as also in the UK or wherever your home country is, whether that is USA, Nigeria, wherever you come from. And this is where we will come in and guide you with that. Now, for example, uh, for Georgia, we approached the medical, uh, the Ministry of Education in Georgia regulates uh, medical universities. And under the Ministry of Education, there is a body called the uh, Educational Quality Enhancement. Um, this is an organization which regulates and ensures that universities in Georgia, for example, meet the requirements that the EQE, which is Education Quality Enhancement has. Now we approach them when we ask them because a lot of students ask us, can I study, uh, can I study uh, medicine in Georgia, but abroad in another country? Because let's say uh, some agency explains to them that uh, it's possible to study in another country and still get the Georgian uh, diploma from the Georgian university. Now we approached them and they stressed to us, which is extremely important and essential for you to consider when, uh, especially if you do consider to go to Georgia. There are safe universities that don't have such issues, uh, but here I'm talking about uh, a, specific, uh, a specific situation where students would ask us if they can study the program in another country while still belonging to the Georgian university. Now they stress to us the EQE who regulate universities is prohibited to carry out or deliver a program. And I'm reading a quote now that they told us uh, to make sure that I'm extremely accurate in the information we give, uh, is prohibited to carry out or deliver a program on a campus outside the municipality of where the initial accreditation for that university was given. For example, let's say the university is in Tbilisi, then that means they must teach it and deliver the program in Tbilisi itself physically, let alone outside of the country of Georgia, or because simply because the EQE, which is the regulating body, is op its jurisdiction only operates within the borders of Georgia. So that means the program must be delivered in the local country, in the local, even not even in the local country, in the local municipality, which is a, a similar word to town or city, for example, or district, something like this. Uh, but I'm reading municipality because this is what they told us. So it's really, really important that you consider this information. You check information for yourself. If you come to us and ask us for uh, any university abroad, you will always get the facts. We'll give you the advantages, we'll give you the disadvantages. And this is to make sure that you're making an informed decision on what's best for you and your future. We will aim always within our knowledge to give you this information within our capacity, within everything that we are aware of at the time. So it's really important. And especially, for example, when you come to us and ask us about uh, studying, for example, let's say in Georgia or some other country, we'll always tell you as a group of doctors, dentists, professional advisors as well, who help many students, because we research these universities, we do our due diligence uh, to make sure that you're not gonna have issues. We'll always give you honest, transparent and accurate advice. And we'll always refer you and tell you, you should go and check with the local authority that regulates, um, whether that be the GMC, for example, who, uh, who may have expressed some interest or some risks about some university or um, the local accrediting body, let's say the EQE, we will tell you, go, read, you go talk to them yourself. Don't, uh, we'll tell you the information we have, but you should go and verify it for yourself because we are confident that we're giving you information that we know is backed by facts. Now, this is not to scare you, but actually to open your eyes that we are here for you to give you the positives, the negatives and everything, the full picture, so you can make an informed decision on what's best for you. Okay, I don't wanna go on too much about it. If you'd like to learn more about this, you can always contact us and we're more than happy to provide you with facts because we care about our students' future 
about you being able to graduate and go back to your country successfully. All right, thank you, Tom. I'll pass it back to you then. No problem, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's always good to be careful. And as you heard from Osman there, we go above and beyond on making sure that these universities will meet the requirements that you need. Uh, moving on from that, um, I'm gonna pass on to my colleague Edmund now to talk uh, a little bit about the recognition of these qualifications. Uh, and what it takes to, to actually have that recognition uh, and what the differences are with some of those countries. Thank you, Edmund. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, and thank you, Osman, to, uh, for sharing that with us. It's, it's always very important to, to do your research. Um, and we also do the research for you. You know, we're very particular with the universities that we choose to partner with, with because again, these are experiences of doctors and dentists who have gone abroad and studied there. So we have to carefully look at them, monitor the universities. And the most important part is for you to come back to your home country, wherever that might be, to be able to practice or go anywhere uh, and use the degree, because we want you to become a doctor anywhere you want to work. So let's take the UK as an example. That's because we, have, we tend to get a lot of students either wanting to come back or UK students wanting to come back to the UK. Most of the universities that we work with are listed in the world directory of medical schools. This means that back in the countries where the universities are listed, these are accredited schools. So it means that the degree allows you to practice there. Now, the next thing also is that in the UK, you have to meet the criteria of acceptance. So let's say if you study in the UK, uh, if you studied uh, in the UK, you don't have to do a licensing exam. You finish the degree, and then you start working. Now, if you study within the European Union, generally, you're only allowed to do an English test, and then you can then start looking for work. Now, students who study outside the European Union are required to do a licensed test, usually called PLAB, um, and then they can practice afterwards. Now, from 2024, the medical license and uh, the, the General Medical Council are replacing this PLAB test and bringing in a more general licensing test called MLA, which stands for Medical Licensing Assessment. The difference between the two is that this time they will include everyone, whether you studied in the UK, whether you studied abroad, it doesn't matter where you went. If you want to practice as a doctor in the UK, you must sit this test. Now, what the Medical Council is saying is that your degree will prepare you for this, because when you graduate, you're a doctor, meaning you have the skills, you have the knowledge, and you have the capabilities of being tested anywhere. So this will be a two-part test, where the first part will test your knowledge, the general knowledge as a doctor, and then the second part will test your practical knowledge, your skills, how you react in scenarios. And that's basically what you'll be doing. And the whole purpose of this is to set a common threshold for safe practice. So everyone is on the same platform and on the same level. Um, now, we also help with the registration of the GMC. This is something we do. Um, and we will continuously help all our students um, who come back to the UK to register with the Medical Council. Now, also for dental, dental students, um, when you come back to the UK, currently, the General Dental Council only assesses students who study outside the European Union, which is a small test, seeing whether you've got the skills necessary to practice. There are some talks as to whether they will be introducing that to all graduates. This means that if you study anywhere in Europe, you will be required to sit the small test to see whether you've got the skills necessary. And as long as you've done well, you've passed your degree, you have nothing to worry about. And this is something that we help you throughout. You have the support whilst you're there, and then the support when you come back to your home country. And we will also advise you on other countries where we've had doctors and dentists practice and register and tell you how their experiences were also. From the US to Australia uh, to Canada, we will help you and, and give you some advice as to what you'll need to do when you go back there. So really, all the degrees that you embark on or the, the courses that you embark on will be recognized in many, many major countries that you'd be able to go to. And we'll be able to advise you on where you, which countries, where you can go and come back as a 
doctor and recognize and have a recognized degree. Over to you, Tom. Perfect. Thank you very much for sharing that with us there. Um, I hope that's given you all some reassurance on, on what the process is like coming back. Um, bear in mind as well that we're going to be helping you with this, as, um, you know, and through through all the services. Uh, I think we're moving on to that now. Um, so we want to talk about how we can help you as an organization. As you can see, we've got a few different steps here. Uh, so we're going to go through each of those in turn, uh, starting off with my job, uh, which is part of the free consultation. So as an advisor, it's our role to have a conversation with you and just talk and talk and talk about everything, your preferences, your budget, your academic background, everything that will help us to help you find the best medical school. And we'll ask lots of questions. We'll answer a lot of your questions and concerns. And we will try together to find the best option possible for you. Now, from there, once you've made that decision, you've taken that leap of faith and decided, yeah, I'm going to apply for this school. Then it goes on to the application management stage. Now, this is where my colleagues like Osman and uh, Victoria that spoke before uh, are going to be walking through your application step by step. They're going to be doing the translations, the legalizations, getting everything certified and developed in accordance exactly with the university you're applying to. Because bear in mind, it's different for everywhere. Uh, so we've got dedicated teams that are on the case that have helped thousands of students that will be helping you to do the exact same part. This is also a chance to help you prepare for entrance exams. So we develop our own materials for these entrance tests. Again, they're all different, not even just per country, but in a lot of cases per university. They design their own tests. And we have people that are skilled at seeing these tests. They've been working with them for many, many years. And we develop the materials in the hope that the students can use these enough and obviously we get a great return on uh, acceptance rates and allowing you to get into the school of your dreams moving on from there it's then about helping you to settle in so you're leaving your family most of you for the first time leaving home i'm sure there's a lot of worried parents and a lot of nervous students listening now that are just thinking about uh, those moments and what it's going to feel like to actually go and do that and because we were set up by a team of medical students that went through the same thing all by themselves, they understand how difficult it is to go through that process. And this is why we've got this huge network spread out across Europe that are there to help and support you. And they're there to things from picking you up from the airport. You know, it sounds like such a small thing, but when you're first going to a new country and you don't speak the language, you've just been on a long flight it can be it can seem very nerve-wracking at first so we're there to help you with that uh, help you with the initial transportation as well as helping you to sort accommodation because we understand that medicine is a hard course and if you're not comfortable when you get there and when you settle in you're going to struggle more with the actual lessons and, and trying to get through uh, all of your lessons and, and tests and everything else so we handle everything from that perspective to make sure there's a smile on your face and to make sure the only thing that you're really focusing on is your education, making some new friends and having some fantastic experiences. Now, it doesn't end from there. We're also going to be helping you throughout your journey. If you ever need us, we'll be there uh, either on the end of the phone. We've got our representatives on the ground. We've got our offices around the world that you can contact. So we're always going to be there to support you and to help you throughout the process. You know, say, for example, you, you have a, a problem with where you're living in your third or fourth year. You contact us and we'll see what we can do to help you and offer you guidance with that. And that's always with you. Once you sign up with us, you are part of the community. We like to call it the Medlink family. As cheesy as it sounds, you join the family when you join with Medlink students. And, and that's what it's all about. And then after this, then it's graduation time. You know, as you heard from a few students, they are finishing their exams for the year. It's always a celebration. The biggest celebration is when you graduate, when you've actually done it, you've managed to take yourself abroad, you've lived independently, and you've also managed to complete one of the hardest degrees that you can complete um, with one of the most distinguished titles of being a, a medical doctor or dentist. Uh, we wanna help you at that point as well. So this is when our team of doctors and dentists will be helping you and offering you guidance and support on getting your registration and getting everything sorted that you need so you can register as a doctor in your country, whether that's help with exams, like Edmund mentioned, the UK MLA, uh, but also help with some of the paperwork and the little things, just to make sure that everything is smooth. And we can then welcome you as, as one of our doctors 
Uh, we've got a growing base of doctors now and dentists. Uh, we'll be inviting you to talk on these webinars in a few years time and you can tell them all about your success stories as well. Okay, so um, moving on from there now, uh, we wanna have a little bit of time to go through some questions and answers. So I'm gonna leave this open now um, and see uh, who's available, uh, if we've got any students to talk or, or any advisors that would like to answer some questions. Uh, is anyone ready with a question at the moment? Yeah, I believe there are some questions for Florian about uh, his studies in Varna as a student from Austria. So Flo, uh, some students are asking, is it safe? Is it recognized? General questions about uh, the, deg the degree from Bulgaria. Okay, I'm sorry again for the interruption early on. There was some issues with the, the computer, I'm sorry. Um, well, yeah, um, it's very safe in Varna. It's great, uh, I've never had any issues. I've never heard of students having issues. Um, there's um, also like, uh, especially for women, um, all the girls I know, they feel safe walking at, uh, walking home at night um, when they have been meeting uh, some friends and stuff and they walk home alone. There's has nothing, nothing been any problems or with anybody else. Um, also, I think that the students, uh, the, the, the university provides you with an um, Bulgarian language course for um, three years in total. It's quite intense in the first and the second year and the third year, it's a little less intense. And knowing the language um, also gives you the confidence uh, to interact with people and um, just to, to get used to the environment. Um, the university is um, uh, internationally recognized. And also what's really, really important is uh, as I'm a fifth year student and I've done uh, a lot of um, internships already in Germany and in Austria. And I've met people from like students that study in Austria, students that study in Germany and a couple of other countries. And um, if you put in the time to, to study, um, you will not be like, you, you, you're on the same level as the students from like the, the um, Western European countries. Um, there's no doubt about it um it's just all about you and if you're passionate about it you um definitely will be um accepted by everybody and everybody will be happy to work with you i mean it's it's everything it's basically it's a hard course but it all um, is like you have to have it in you and work and the universities um, do great jobs in providing you with um the facilities to pursue your dream and then you just um have to to take the opportunity any more questions from Osman? Hey, Florian, thank you. Um, yes, I think uh, we've got another question coming up for uh, another one of our students now. Uh, we're just seeing if he's uh, still available at the moment. Shingara, are you with us right now? Can you hear me? Yeah, you're a little bit quiet. Could you come a bit close to the, the microphone? Um, can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, yeah that's perfect. Um, so a lot of people are quite concerned um, about being away from their families and have asked, you know, what it's like to actually take that step and live independently. Can you tell us how you found that experience? Yeah, um, sure. Um, going away from your family and being independent is a very big step in your life, but it's a, it's a necessary step to take in towards the goal that you want to reach to become a doctor or whatever you want to become and set your own course in life. It is nerve wracking, but once you go through it and decide to take that quote unquote leap of faith, everything falls into place. And once you get people by your side who can help you, then life seems a bit um, easier. For me, um, coming to Serbia, if I was to do it by myself, it would have been impossible. But with Medlink, they made everything easier. And if I have any problems or anything, then I simply just give them a text or I give them a call. And then together we discuss solutions and how to move forward. So I think it is, it is a difficult thing. But if you have people who are supporting you, then it can be slightly easier. So I do say that. It's a, it's a big step, but a good step as well. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much. It's great to hear from you. I know we were going to bring you on beforehand to talk about your experience, and it's great um, that you're able to share share that with us now. So uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Pleasure. So, um, we've got a question now uh, come through for uh, Dr. Saz. Um, and the question there is, did you experience any disadvantages as an overseas dentist uh, with the registration and working in general? So the answer to that, Tom, thanks again for the question, um, is as yes, initially, I think uh, with the registration, um, it was slightly different when I got in because the, the registration formats can change, but it was a relatively seamless process for me. I never had any really uh, big issues apart from the fact that it was just the formatting was slightly different and that raised a little bit of uncertainty. So that's with regards to the, the actual registration. Um, with respect to actually working, that's where I felt there was that thing about just, you know, trying to integrate with the UK system. And for me, the, the big thing with, with that is, is simply just that. It's just to integrate very quickly. So I integrated with different groups of dentists and uh, there were different groups like dentinal tubules um, where you could connect with other dentists. And you basically, as soon as you get into practice, uh, as soon as I went into practice, I started to network hard and meet other dentists who were doing things according to the UK standards. But going forward, if there's anyone in this group is in that situation who wants to have that kind of experience before they graduate, I'm more than happy to help and facilitate with that. And I know a lot of other clients here, uh, other uh, members here would also be able to help with that. Um, but it, even now, that's not something that will be a great of great difficulty because there are courses you can jump on to advance quickly. Um, so you're much more integrated. And I think that's the key. It's integration, really. Because after a couple of years, no one cares. Really, no one cares. I mean, people care about what you've done in the last two years in terms of the quality of your work and things like that. But but really, and, and that's what I rest on. No one cares now where I graduated from or, or anything like that. Um, unless, of course, they're dental students like here, of course. But, but if uh, in terms of my, you know, the work that I do going forward, um, they just want to see my portfolio and things like that. So really, um, I don't really see that as a problem. As long as you surround yourself with, with highly qualified clinicians, you're going to do just great. So you shouldn't have a problem there. And I think you're the perfect example of that, really. You know, with all the registrations that you've got, those <sighs> you uh, you never get any patients asking you, you know, where that's, you. <laughs> that's really that's really kind, but uh, you know, I really believe that that's something anyone here can do. Like, I really mean that. Like, I really believe that. I've not done anything magical. We just we really all just got our heads together as a team in our group, and we just really imagined really deeply where we could go with this. And we just looked, just made inquiries and 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 went to the different dental councils and asked them. Um, I, I know one guy who's out in Malta now and he's working there and he loves him, you know. So it, it's it's all it's all um, it's all on the cards. But um, there will be definitely hurdles, but you can always get around them. I think really if you surround yourself with the right people. Fantastic. Thank you so much for answering that. And yeah, it is really inspiring for you to be able to say that. You know, anyone can achieve that for those of them sat at home that have got the dreams to get to where you can get to just hearing that uh, will have such an impact and you know bring such a positive light towards uh, that goal because it can seem so far away but when you can actually hear from someone who's been through it all and smiling at the other end and you're doing so well with it it's uh, it's fantastic so I, uh, I want to move on now to um, another question uh, that we've had quite a lot uh, which is how safe is Georgia compared to Ukraine? Obviously, they're, they're both uh, similar in terms of the finances, and a lot of our students um, studying there before uh, are now studying in Georgia. Um, Ola, I want to bring you in now to, uh, to answer this question. Are you with us now? Uh, we can't hear you at the moment. Can you hear me now? Yes, loud and okay. clear. Regarding the how safe is Georgia, um, because... Georgia is currently very neutral on the war, so they have no issue with Russia, whereby the, the Russia will, will attack. So there's no problem on that. And compared to Ukraine, because I transferred from Ukraine, Georgia is very safe and uh, you can do whatever you want. I always work at night going to get go groceries. I don't know why I do that, but going to get groceries at night and I have no issue with them. No, 
uh, stranger attacking me, no stranger doing anything to me. And I also have some friends who are living in the same building with ladies. If you are a lady and you feel scared because you're a lady, they are very safe. They also go out at night and do whatever they want to do. So there isn't an issue. Julia is very safe. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, it's a big concern for a lot of students, especially with a country like Georgia. I know from uh, from my experience in the UK, it's not a country that that's that well known about. Um, you know, not that people know about like they do with a lot of Western European countries. So sometimes they worry and there is that fear of the unknown. Am I going to be safe walking around at night and and that sort of thing? Have you ever had any concerns with that while you've been there? No, I haven't had any concern because I need that. I've always been all free. And the funny thing is, they are actually excited to meet you. So they are not ready to attack you. They just want to have a conversation with you or just smile at you whenever you walk by. So they're, they're just very safe. Fantastic. Hey, thank you for sharing that with us. Right, let's see. Um, so have we got anyone else um, that wants to stand up and uh, and ask any, answer any questions? Yeah, um, Tom, so obviously a lot of our students come from different um, cultural backgrounds and there's a question that's been asked, this gets asked quite a lot, is uh, specifically actually in Serbia, someone's asking how diverse is Serbia? Um, and this, I think, is a perfect question for uh, Shinga who's studying there. Shinga, could you shed some light on that for us, please? Yeah, um, I would say that pretty, pretty much that um, Serbia have got a good diversity. I mean, I've interacted with quite a lot of people from different backgrounds and also with the Serbian people also having some sort of different sort of backgrounds from different cities. So there's quite a lot of mixture within the university. So you don't really feel as though that you're out of place. Everybody comes from a different place and everybody's new in that environment, wanting to get to interact and know each other without any sort of judgment. So I would say that Serbia has a, a, a good sort of diversity. And, and as a student, have you found yourself being uncomfortable in any situation at all? Uh, absolutely not. To be honest, um, the people have been so friendly. And they've even approached me wanting to get to know who I am, where I'm from, welcoming, welcome me to, to Serbia. So I think overall it has been a great experience and it's something that I really did not expect to, to happen. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Because this is a very big worry of a lot of our students and this is one of the things that concerns also their parents. But yeah, thank you. And uh, how have you found settling in and making friends in, in, in a new country for you? Settling was was pretty easy and making friends was also easy. Like everything in Serbia, it's easy because the people make it easy for you. It's it's always comfortable and people are always willing to to help you or to to listen to you with anything that you, you have to say. So when I when I first came here, I was already had having people to come pick me up, um, help me find accommodation, get used to the university the show me around the city. So instantly I felt like I was at home. So it's, it's, a, very, it's a very good place to adapt very quickly. That's great. Thank you so much for answering that. Uh, it's, it's, it's helped a lot of the students. We hope it reassures them as well. Thank you. What other questions do we have? Um, Tom, do you have any other questions that you would like to, to share? Um, I'm just having a look through myself at the moment. Um, we've got so many and we've had so many questions answered as well. Uh, I think our team have been working really hard throughout the webinar to try and answer all the questions. And of course, this isn't the end. Um, we're not impossible to reach. You can book appointments with us and we can help you specifically with your questions as well. Um, let me just have a look through here. Uh, so we wanna ask a student, um, I'm not sure who would want to answer this. Uh, so whoever's ready, uh, what is it like to, to settle in um, in a new country? Have can we I got anyone that? there at the moment? Can I answer that? Yes, yeah, please do. Okay, settling in, in a new country. Um, I would have said it would be hard, but since you are working with Medlik, it is very easy. They pick you up at the airport, they will set everything in for you, your bank, uh, 
opening your bank account, they'll be the one to do it for you. And doing your resident permit, they'll be there with you. In case you have any issue with your university, they are very well affiliated with the university they mentioned. So you won't be able to, like, you won't feel left out or out of the world. You won't be confused on what to do. You can always contact them or contact us rather to help you out on whatever you want to do. So settling in here is very easy if you are working with meddling. So unless, I don't know if you just go on being a remote, so you will be very lost on many things. Like now, uh, I'm always on, 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 a, on a call or on a, on a chat with one of the meddling uh, agents who is more into this meddling work more than me. Like I'm always on call or chat with them like, what, okay, I need this, I need that. And they are always ready to help regarding the time, regarding the hour, regarding the, the uh, regardless of the time and the hours, I'm sorry. They are always ready to help. And so to me, settling in is very easy. This is the easiest settling in I've ever done in my life. And I've been to uh, Ukraine, which is very hard for me and other countries. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you for going through that one and giving us your own personal experience on settling in um with regards to georgia uh i'm gonna have to apologize we've got so many questions coming through um but we're gonna have to to wrap the webinar up um and all i would say is for for those of you that have still got questions now is your chance uh to get in touch with us there is no better time than now to get started on this process uh, you don't have to make any kind of commitment just give us a call uh, and we can talk to you about your options and opportunities for studying abroad now you've heard a little bit about the process, about the services and what we will do to help you. Um, we're really looking forward to having you join our community, uh, come on to our later webinars in the coming years um, and just share in, in all of the opportunities that studying medicine and dentistry ha has got for you uh, to go abroad. Uh, we really look forward to, to helping you achieve your dream. Uh, just following on from that, um, you can see here a couple of the QR codes. Uh, we've got one of his, these here that you can scan that will allow you to see all of the universities um, from today, plus a few more as well. Um, you'll be able to see all of the details with regards to those. You can also scan the code to the right for your own attendance certificate. Um, so you'll have that certificate of attendance there. Um, I've heard they're, they're collectible items almost with these certificates. Um, also, the recording uh, will be available on our YouTube channel within a few days. Um, and you can, you can contact us um, using uh, the numbers along the left-hand side. Um, as soon as you contact us on here, we'll allow you to book an appointment through. It's a completely free appointment with either myself or one of my colleagues um, in the advisor department. Um, we will do our best to listen to you, to hear your concerns, to hear what you're looking for, your budget, your academic history, and try our best to help you. Um, so there is no better time than now, especially if you're looking for this year. Deadlines are approaching. As I said, there's some that have gone already. There's some that are going as soon as tomorrow. Uh, we just want to do our best now just to help you get into that medical school, get started on that adventure. So what are you waiting for? Uh, let's get started. Let's get talking. Um, you can also see the links below um, that you can click for the certificates uh, in case the, the QR codes don't work for you there. Right, it's fantastic having you all with us today. We're going to leave this screen open for a little bit now uh, just to allow you to get the details down if you need to. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, it's been a pleasure hearing from, from all the students as well. So I want to thank all of you and my colleagues uh, for going over all of the information. And um, we'll see you on the next one. I hope to hear from plenty of you soon.